The Haunting of Hill House is a Netflix original series that tells a chilling and fascinating story of life inside of a haunted house. It's based on the 1959 gothic horror story by Shirley Jackson and was created and directed by Mike Flanagan. It is my favorite horror series of all time, and although I like the book, I absolutely love the series. Today we're going to make a spooky Halloween tree dedicated to the Crane family and the haunting of Hill House. We'll also discuss some of the ins and outs of the characters and the series itself. So if you haven't seen the series, be forewarned, there are spoilers ahead. First, I made the tree using a wooden dowel and a used up ribbon container for the base. I covered these in brown felt and then added Chanel pipe cleaners for branches. This process is pretty straightforward. There's just a lot of hot glue and felt involved. For the branches, I ended up doubling and twisting the pipe cleaners to give them more strength, and that seemed to work out quite well, actually. I printed out photos of the characters and house and glued them onto paperboard to make little ornaments, but I also have some other things that I'll add to the tree as well. Now, let's decorate the tree and discuss the haunting of Hill House. We'll start with the patriarch of Hill House, Hugh Crane. He's a fixer and a builder. He likes to make everything right. He's a great father, even after the house wrecks his life beyond recognition. And I really feel sorry for him because the house took everything from this poor guy. It really left him as kind of a shell of a person. Until the end of the movie, that is. Next, we have Stephen Crane. He was a really hard character for me to like. I mean, he repeatedly denied his family's supernatural experiences, and he claimed they were all mentally ill. Then, he went on to write a book about their experiences in the form of a haunted house novel. He claims through most of the series that he never saw a ghost. That is, until his father corrects him during a drive one night. I love that scene in the movie. It's one of my favorites. And I really like to see Steve realize that the supernatural does exist. Shirley is another character I just didn't like. I thought she was too cold, but it's kind of fitting because she did end up becoming a mortician. We're led to believe that it could be because the kitten she rescued died and the fact that she never fully processed the death of her mother, but I still kind of think it's a little macabre. But maybe Shirley chose death as her profession in order to come to terms and understand human mortality. Theodora is the middle of the Crane children, and she's one of my favorite characters. As a child, she was brave and assertive, even to adults. But she was also incredibly sensitive. So much so that she could psychically intuit things about people just by touching them. Her mother says that Theodora's grandmother was also sensitive, and when she sees her daughter becoming overwhelmed with the gift, she gives her a pair of gloves to wear to protect her from sensing things about people when she really doesn't want to. But we also see that she is touched by a ghostly hand at about the same time that these psychic powers present themselves. I tend to believe her powers were a result of the house more than an inherited psychic ability, simply because at the end of the movie, she no longer needs the gloves. Luke is the youngest son and Nell's twin. He's thoughtful and sweet as a child. He loves to draw and play games, but he's more than a little curious and adventurous. Remember, he's the one who got stuck in the dumbwaiter at one point. Unfortunately, as an adult, grappling with the after effects of living in Hill House causes him to turn to drugs as an escape. He stays in an almost constant state of depression, and I can't help but feel overwhelmingly sorry for him. Nell is the youngest daughter and Luke's twin. As a child, she loved the little teacup with the stars on it, called her little cup of stars. She was repeatedly haunted by the bent neck lady growing up, and later we learn it was her adult self trying to warn her about the dangers of Hill House. 
As an adult, she's also constantly depressed, and the only person who could ease her suffering was her husband Arthur, who was also taken from her, presumably by Hill House. All in all, Nell had a rough time her whole life and only found peace when she passed over to the other side. Next, we have the matriarch of the Crane family, Olivia. She was an architect and a loving mother to all of her children. Now, Olivia has the most beautiful monologues in the series. I mean, overall, the writing is spectacular for the series, but I especially love Olivia's love of literature and philosophy, and that comes through in her monologues. Hill House seemed to have the greatest effect on her, and soon she would slowly be driven insane by the ghosts and the house itself. This would eventually lead to her death. Which brings us to Poppy Hill. She's a resident spirit of Hill House and would be the downfall of Olivia Crane. When she was alive, she met her husband in an insane asylum where they were both patients. They would leave the asylum and live out their days in Hill House. They also stayed there after death and were haunting the house when the Cranes moved in. Catherine Parker plays Poppy and she's sensational. Poppy's tone of voice is always lighthearted and happy, but her words are eerie and terrifying. The hat represents Poppy's husband, William Hill. He appears as a tall man because in life, everyone made him feel so small. So he decided that in death, he was going to make himself incredibly tall. He wears a boiler hat, and he always resented Luke for wearing it as a child. Clara Dudley is a woman who knows the evil of Hill House all too well. She works for the Cranes as a housekeeper, but only during daylight hours, never after dark. She and her husband once worked and lived in Hill House, but they both suffered unbelievable nightmares, and Clara would eventually suffer a miscarriage. Once they moved out, all their mental suffering subsided. Clara is serious at all times, and I would say incredibly uncomfortable and always low-key afraid in the house. But who can blame her? Abigail is Mr. and Mrs. Dudley's little girl. She's friends with Luke, and most of the Cranes think she's an imaginary friend, but she is in fact very real. I don't actually think Olivia even realized she was a real child until Luke invited her to that fateful tea party. Horace Dudley is Clara's husband and a handyman at Hill House. The Dudleys are often dismissed by the Cranes, and that kind of irritates me. It's really too bad, too, because I feel like they could have learned a lot from them. Horace Dudley gives an emotional speech about the dangers of the Hill House to Hugh when he notices Olivia is struggling. That speech is nothing less than an Oscar-worthy monologue by Robert Longstreet, the actor who portrayed Horace. Truly. That is just, it's an emotional scene and it's really well played. This is the door to the Red Room. The room is different for everyone. It becomes whatever its victims desire in order to lure them in. Nail calls it the heart of the house, but then she corrects herself and says, no, it's the stomach because this is where it devours its victims. This red door is one of the most important plot points to the series. And we can't forget the statues, the statues to that gorgeous, gorgeous conservatory. And there are statues throughout the house too, so the statues really fit in well. And now our Haunting of Hill House Halloween tree is complete. The Haunting of Hill House is a masterpiece. Every scene is carefully crafted and the actors are all amazing in their roles. But it's the ghosts lurking in scenes that aren't even acknowledged that impress me the most. This is by far my favorite horror series of all time. I could watch it again and again, it's just that good. The creator and director Mike Flanagan is nothing less than a genius, I'm not saying that lightly. Both Stephen King and Quentin Tarantino sang the series praises. It's, it's amazing if you haven't seen it. 
and I cannot wait to watch the next series, The Haunting of Bly Manor. Thank you so much for watching. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.